When you consider that Chris Perkins has been developing stories for D&D for years now, and also DMs a game live on stage for Penny Arcade's Acquisitions Incorporated, and on top of this he has a Twitch stream, Dice Camera Action, he's a fantastic resource for knowing how to make a great game. When I first started out DMing, it was a long time ago, and we didn't have things like the internet, uh, I was worried, I, I made a lot of mistakes. I overprepared, I made huge campaign worlds, not realizing that the players wouldn't see one one hundredth of them. I uh, created adventures that were very linear and railroady and didn't really offer even the illusion of choice. Um, I've gotten over that, and that's simply by virtue of experience. I think that if you're starting out DM, just be aware that you will make mistakes but ultimately they don't matter. You're gonna learn from them and you're gonna change the next time you run a game. The great thing about DMing is that every game you run will end and that you'll have the next one to basically do it all over again. So you have this constant, you can, you can blow it, but you're gonna have another chance. You'll get better and better and better and better and you'll learn things about your players that will make it easier and you'll learn things about yourself that will make it easier. Try to listen more than you talk because uh, a DM who listens can uh, better understand what the, what the players are trying to get out of the game. Uh, you can look for opportunities to take the game in interesting directions. Uh, often the players will feed you ideas without even realizing they're doing it uh, that will lead the campaign in very interesting directions. So I think it can't be overstated enough that listening is really the, the biggest skill that a DM can have for success. If I were to say a close number two, it would be the sense of uh, don't be married to a particular thing. Uh, be prepared to throw what you have away if something better happens at the table. And just allow yourself to kind of go with the flow of the narrative. Um, you control your campaign to an extent and you are building a world to an extent but as soon as it comes into contact with the players, they are now adding to it and helping to shape it. And if you let them push it in interesting directions, uh, you may be surprised that the depth of the campaign is far more than you thought. Um, and honestly, it's good to be surprised as the DM to come to a point in the game where you don't know what's going to happen next because that suspense and your ability to try to cope with that situation is gonna make you a stronger DM down the road and your players are gonna like you for it. I want the game and the story of the game to be rewarding and to have closure and to have the characters grow and transform. Um, the way I've always looked at D&D games, at least in recent years, is it's like a serialized TV show where you are, if you watch it long enough, you're gonna know the characters on a deeper level and you're going to want to see them go from point A to point B so that they're not the same people at the end of the story as they were at the beginning. Things have happened to them and they've, their relationships have evolved and deepened and become much richer. Uh, but you know, episode to episode, you wanna make sure that every character gets their moment to shine or every character gets a fish out of water situation or, or something um, so that um, the people who are watching the show can differentiate the characters, but also love each character for a different reason. That sort of serialized TV show mentality even filters down into how I think about the game when I'm not at the table. Because when I'm out walking my dog, or when I'm out, uh, you know, when I'm in the shower, when I'm getting ready for bed or whatever, I'm thinking about the game. I'm thinking about what future episodes I could do, what fun things I can do to torment Anna's character or Holly's character, um, what if scenarios. But I think of it very episodically. And I think in terms of seasons, like when this season of the show is over, what's the next season gonna be? And what's the main story thrust of that season gonna be? And how are each of the characters going to change during that season? These thoughts are constantly in my head, which is really annoying because I have like five other projects to think about and constantly ideas are popping in my head. I think uh, great DMs, they never stop thinking about their games. I think it was Martin Scorsese who said that um, he considers himself less of a director and more of a casting 
guy. That is to say that if you cast your movie right, it doesn't matter what happens next. The actors you have are going to be so good, they're going to give you great performances, you're going to end up with a great movie. Um, I feel the same thing with a D&D group. A DM and a, and a DM's game is only as good as the players in the game. You can take the best DM in the world, and if you saddle them with a bunch of lame -o players, uh, or players who have no interest in actually telling a story or getting into their characters, you're not going to have a very fulfilling experience, and it's going to be hard to pull that out of them. Um, so I'm very lucky with the players I have um, on dice camera action. The only thing you really need to know in order to succeed with a group of players is D&D has a social contract. The contract is the DM is going to create a story and try to keep the game moving forward and make it as fun for everybody at the table. And in exchange, the player part of the contract is they're not going to act like a bunch of doorknobs and just try to tear everything apart and ruin the experience for everybody else at the table. Um, if you can find players who will embrace that fundamental social contract, there is almost nothing you can do that's going to disappoint them. Now there is, I mean, there's just as a, a game can't really survive unless the players are good, a, a game can't survive if the DM uh, isn't good. And so uh, fundamental DM skills are, I don't think you have to be a rules master, um, you, uh, but you have to know the very basics of the rules. And you can get that by downloading the basic rules off our website or, um, by having somebody just, by playing in a game so that you get the fundamentals and then going off and starting your own game. That's often, most, a lot of DMs don't start by being DMs, they start by being players. Uh, and that's where they get the fundamentals of the rules and that's where they, they, the, they feel, uh, or they learn that the, maybe it's not so hard to be a DM after all. If they can watch a DM do it and that DM's not breaking down in tears, Oh, well, maybe you can do it too. Uh. <laughs> Thank you, Chris Perkins, for being on the show. This is Dungeon Life is a channel devoted to D&D &D, where we interview the creators and community members of our favorite game. This is entirely made possible through Patreon. Our contributors there basically pay to help make these videos. And in exchange, they get behind the scenes footage, early access to videos, and a lot of other content. And this all helps us not only improve the quality of these videos, but also steer the direction of Dungeon Life and find out where people would like to see it go next. Now, this entire show is not possible without the amazing D&D community. You guys have been fantastic. You've been really, really positive, and you've been exceptionally helpful in your feedback and support. Thank you guys so much.